Merci beaucoup. Thank you for that very warm welcome. I'm honored to receive this award. I'm honored to receive such a warm welcome. And although I didn't understand a word of that song, it sounded terrific to me. <laughs> I, I, appreciate, I appreciate the praise. Greetings uh, to everyone here, uh, to uh, Bishops uh, Stefan and Andre. Uh, thank you, uh, Paul, Yvonne, Renel, for your kind words. And thank you to the Ukrainian Canadian Congress. Uh, this organization does tremendous work to promote the Ukrainian cause in Canada. So, you know, I want to uh, thank all of my head table guests, all distinguished guests who are here tonight, but particularly our appreciation for Paul, for Lita Coolidge of the Toronto branch, and for the whole team who's put this on tonight. So thank you very much, everyone. You know, it's a pleasure to, uh, to actually see so many familiar faces here tonight, especially those who joined us on our visit to Ukraine last year. I'm really delighted to see such a great turnout, not only from Eugene Choli of the Ukrainian World Congress, but also from groups like the Ukrainian Catholic Women's League of Canada, the Canadian Friends of Ukraine, the Ukraine Canada, Canada Ukraine, excuse me, Chamber of Commerce, and many others that contribute in so many important ways to this community and to our country. And I'm proud of the very strong contingent of my parliamentary colleagues who are joining me here tonight. In particular, I'd be remiss if I didn't give particular praise to Senator Andrichuk, who has been such a strong voice for the Ukrainian community in Ottawa for almost 20 years. She's been joined, as you've seen, by a large number of our ministers, of our members of parliament who are working closely with the community, especially here in the GTA. If I can name just a few who have, I know, special work because of who they represent uh, in this area, Ted Opitz, Vladislav Lizon, Bernard Troche. Now, friends has been, go ahead, give them a hand. Now, friends, as has been mentioned several times for 120 years, the Ukrainian community has played an important role in the growth of this country. From east to west, Ukrainian Canadians have made outstanding contributions throughout our society in every area, in business, academia, the arts, sport, politics, and of course, many different fields. And Canada is stronger for it. This award has been pre presented to many distinguished Ukrainian Canadians as well as friends of Ukraine. As has already been mentioned, among those friends was John Diefenbaker, the first Prime Minister to receive it. I am very honored to follow in his footsteps. For Diefenbaker personified the distinctly Canadian reality that people from all backgrounds can and do succeed in this great country of ours. Of course, what makes this presentation special is the fact that it pays tribute to the legacy of Taras Shevchenko. His words, as you all know, provided the inspiration for Ukrainian independence. He said, and I quote, I think I've said this quote before, strive and you will triumph, for God is on your side. The rewards are glory, truth, and that most sacred of things, freedom. Shevchenko was a brilliant artist and a renowned poet, but most important, he was a voice for freedom. As a consequence, Tsar Nicholas I condemned him to live in exile, and I quote again, the sentence was, under the strictest surveillance without a right to write or paint. But even that cruel sentence could not silence Shevchenko or dissuade his many followers. In the decades that followed, his spirit would inspire Ukrainians to fight for liberty against not only the Tsars, but also the totalitarian ideologies of the Nazis and Soviets and we know from history, nothing can put down the freedom of the Ukrainian people. Now this is important, and I know I speak to a special community in this regard, because here in Canada, with our deep parliamentary traditions and our comparatively benign history, democracy sometimes does get taken for granted. We often need to be reminded of how long and hard the struggle for basic freedoms has been, and that it remains so for all too many of our fellow human beings. The Ukrainian Canadian community has always provided that perspective and always reflected the voice for the, of the oppressed here and around the world. 
I remember in the latter days of the Cold War when some so-called experts talked of a middle way in global affairs as if there were some kind of moral equivalence between the imperfections of Western democratic societies and the totalitarian tyranny of the Soviet Empire. Of course, Ukrainian Canadians would have none of that kind of thinking. You reminded us of the realities Ukrainians lived under. Not just a denial of basic rights, but of imprisonment, brutality, and even, almost unbelievably, the imposition of mass starvation. I am, of course, speaking of the Holodomor, of which I will say more in a moment. But the important thing is this. I'm here to tell you that as long as I am Prime Minister, our government will always speak out for those things that elevate the human spirit. Freedom, democracy, human rights, and the rule of law for all nations and for all peoples of this world. For friends, if we are not blind to the dark points in Ukraine's past, neither are we forgetful of our own. This conservative government, as, as has been mentioned, was the first to formally recognize Canada's own black mark, the injustice of World War I internment. And we've established a recognition fund to make sure that everyone learns from that event. We will never sweep history under the carpet, not Canada's history and not Ukraine's history. That's why when I visited Ukraine last year, I made a special point of visiting historic sites to pay my respects on behalf of all Canadians. And I started by laying a wreath at the sad memory of childhood statue in honor of the many millions who died in the Holodomor. In that quiet wooded place, surrounded by those of our, surrounded by our delegation, for whom this was intensely personal, and asked to place bread and salt before the monument, a simple act of remembrance, I was deeply moved. The magnitude of the tragedy the magnitude of the tragedy that the Ukrainian people suffered is exceeded only by the bitter recognition that it was inflicted upon them by the government that ruled their land. And it is a great sadness for me that for decades official Ottawa was afraid to call it what it was, a genocide. But. But in 2008, and I have to say, at the initiative of my colleague, MP James Bozan, we had the chance to finally do something about it, and we did. Our government adopted the bill in Parliament declaring Holodomor to be genocide. From now on, in our eyes at least, those who took the lives of so many millions of Ukrainians must take the guilt as well. In that same solemn spirit, in that same spirit of solemn remembrance, I went to the museum at the infamous Lonsky Street prison. There I came face to face with the reminders of Soviet era oppression. And I also saw Babin Yar, where the Nazis slaughtered literally tens of thousands of people. I made these stops, I made these stops, because we must all understand Ukraine's past to appreciate the challenges and the promise of its future, and how central the desire of freedom is for that future. To see the faces of Ukraine's future, as has been mentioned, I met with students at the Ukrainian Catholic University, University in Lviv. It was an opportunity to speak openly about the freedom that generations of Ukrainians have longed for. And I have to tell you, I was tremendously impressed by these young men and women their knowledge, their idealism, their eagerness to hear of the past and to create a better future. They are the embodiment of Ukraine's aspirations. Through this trip, our government hopes to build on the personal ties that have long connected our two countries. During that visit, we signed a youth mobility agreement to make it easier for such young people to get life experiences in both countries. And I announced new programs to provide expert Canadian advice and training in areas like economic development. While I was in Kiev, as you remember, I also raised issues 
that are of great concern to the government of Canada. I took particular care to show Canada's support for democratic debate by meeting with Yulia Tymoshenko. Like many of you, I am seriously concerned about that situation. I have written directly to President Yanukovych to let him know that I am deeply concerned that the conduct of Timoshenko's trial does not reflect accepted norms of due process or fairness. Friends, we all know, we all know that a vigorous political opposition and judicial independence are vital to building a democratic and prosperous Ukraine. Can Canada will support Ukraine whenever it moves towards freedom, democracy, and justice. And I said that before President Yanukovych. However, I also said our foreign policy is rooted in principle and in the defense of freedom. So to be clear, our government is very concerned about the path the government of Ukraine appears to be taking. And as Minister Baird said, Tuesday's developments could have serious consequences for the bilateral relationship between our governments. The Ukrainian people can count on Canada to stand up for their liberty. Canada, Canada is always ready to help, always ready to help, always ready to make a positive contribution to those who want to move forward, to help democratic institutions take root in Ukraine and around the world. And I know that each and every person here tonight shares that cause, which is why I really am so honored to be here. I want to thank you once again for that warm welcome, for your tremendous hospitality, and for the honor that you've presented, and also for the work that you do, day in and day out, to preserve your proud heritage as Ukrainians and to help us all build our great country. Slava Ukraini, Slava Kanadi.